Springs eternal. <laughs> Just call that roll. Okay. Here. Shaner. Here. Scott. Here. Waters. Here. Moore. Here. Good. We stand for a moment of silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are vital importance to the sustainable and re resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of the city of Sioux City. Whereas those infrastructure, facilities, and services could not be provided without dedicated efforts of public works professionals who are engineers, managers, employees at, at all levels of government and the private sector, who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. Whereas it is in the public interest for citizens of Sioux City to gain knowledge of and maintain a progressive interest in understanding the importance of public work and public work program in the respective communities. And whereas the year of 2022 marks the 62nd annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, and behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim May 15, 21st to the 21st, 22, as National Public Works Week. I urge all citizens to join their, with representatives of the American Public Works Association and government agencies in activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Go ahead and say a few words. All right, I want to thank the mayor and council for this proclamation of uh, APWA's Public Works Week. This year's theme is ready and resilient. I believe this is a perfect description of public works here in Sioux City. It's always prepared to take on the concerns that come forward and resilient enough to overcome difficulties. I want to be sure that everyone knows that and acknowledges of Public Works covers employees of several departments within the city of Sioux City. Public Works Department, which covers our street maintenance, traffic control, engineering, parking and skywalk and fleet maintenance. Our utilities water department, which covers our water treatment, water distribution, wastewater and stormwater collection systems and our utilities wastewater department, which oversees our wastewater treatment plant, our solid waste collection, our recycling programs, and our soil erosion control, along with our parks department, which staff maintains our parks, cemeteries, pools, splash pads, and sledding attractions. A lot of people don't know, or I frankly probably don't care what public works employees do until they hit a pothole, they don't have water, or they see trash in a park. So I commend our public works employees and our parks, utilities, department employees, what they diligently do, maintaining our city's infrastructures and amenities, always reminding our number one goal is keeping our citizens and employees safe. This year is a special year for Public Works Week for Sioux City and myself. As I serve as this year's president of the American Public Works Association's Iowa chapter, I'm the 66th, 65th person to serve as the chapter's president. It was a wonderful recognition from my counterparts around the state. And this is the first time in more than 35 years a Sioux City staff member or local member of APWA has been elevated to that position. This fall, the City of Sioux City will host the Iowa Chapter's Fall Conference. And as part of Public Works Week and as the Iowa Chapter President, I have the distinct honor this Thursday of attending the City of Clive City Council meeting to formally present Jeff May, Public Works Director for City of Clive, as a recipient of APWA's Top 10 Award, one of the most coveted and prestigious awards in the public works field. The award recognizes 10 individuals throughout the US and Canada each year for their professionalism, expertise, and professional dedication to improving the quality of life in their communities throughout the advancement of public works, service, and technology. Mr. May will be the Iowa's 16th recipient of a top 10 award, and more impressively, our ninth consecutive honoree. The 
The last thing I want to do is we all know the mayor's fondness for engineers. I'd like to present a copy. <laughs> <laughs> of this book, Will learns about civil engineering and the world around him. It's an award-winning children's book that he can read to his grandchildren and they can learn and enjoy, and they can enjoy learning how civil engineers improve our lives. As part of Public Works Week, our engineering staff will be reading and giving copies of this book to second graders tomorrow at Morningside's Elementary. Sioux City Schools STEM Elementary School. The copies of the book were donated to APWA by Bolton Minx Engineers. Bolton Minx created the book along with a series of books which also includes Larry the Land Surveyor, Lindsay the GIS Specialist, and Parker the Planner to name a few. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow after lunch. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I'm sure some engineers spent a lot of time putting this book together, so <laughs> I'll make sure that I read it. And Dan can tell you, I spoke, welcomed a bunch of lawyers to town, and I really did my best to not say anything about lawyers, so we're not going to say anything about engineers today. <laughs> Very good. We have a proclamation that reads, whereas on behalf of the City Council, I'm pleased to join the Historic Preservation Commission in promoting May 16th through the 22nd is Historic Preservation Week in Sioux City, Iowa. And whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas historic preservation is relevant for all, Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds. Whereas it's important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people and a community. Now, therefore, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim May 16th, 20 to the 22nd, 2022, as Historic Preservation Week in Sioux City, and urge all the citizens to learn more about Sioux City and its rich historic past. I present this to you guys. Thank, Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Scott, also for being a strong supporter of historic preservation in Sioux City. Um, we've got a few events left this week. Everybody here, I think, missed the most exciting event on Saturday. We had our second annual, it's kind of an architectural scavenger hunt. This year and last year, we're celebrating historic Pearl District because we're working hard with mayor's support, especially <coughs> due to a grant, and we're studying the area and trying to get on the National Historic Register, which means money. Uh, it means helping downtown invigorate. Um, let's see, Tuesday we still have the walking tour of historic Pearl Street. That takes, I think that meets at Fifth and Water. Uh, you can go to SiouxCityHP.org for all the information. Thursday will be um, History at High Noon at the Sioux City Public Museum. Both of these events are hosted by museum archivist Tom Munson, who is just a gem to this city in his knowledge. And then Friday, we will cap it off. Top of the Warrior, 4 p.m., we'll be awarding Treasure of Sioux City to our beloved Larry Obermeyer. And we will also be doing awards for all the local grade schools, middle and high school for writing or essay contests, grade schoolers coloring contests. And it's really a fun event. If you want to come, the public's welcome. We're really trying to make it about everyone being welcome and something for everyone and, and uh, That's celebrating four our city. Friday. What's that? Four o'clock Friday. Yep, yep. Thank you. Up at the top. It just happens to be um, happy hour too, but it'll be fun. That's just a coincidence. Well, for a Diet Coke. That for sure. Yeah, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. If we get a really good crowd, and as we were told last year when we started with the coloring contest, uh, that you involve children and that means parents come. And so it's really widened the event. So we're excited. So thank you so much. Good. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. I'm going to let. And then we just also wanted to mention that with the award of the Hubbard Grant, um, the CLG Grant, we're also hosting the 2023 Preserve Iowa Summit, and we're going to host it in the Warrior. Um, they're able to hold our the amount of people that we're needing to host from there. And we also nominated the Warrior for a Preserve um, 
a preservation at its best award. So we're waiting to hear back on that. But hopefully that we get nice. that with the summit would be a great combination. That would so. be wonderful. And we're going to get Northwest Iowa. <laughs> Everyone has to come here. You better believe it. There you go. All right, thank you. Thank you. Great job, ladies. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the consent agenda, 2 through 12B. Consider them to pass unanimously. If you want to speak on an item, please come up as I read it. If you want to speak on not, an item not on the agenda, come up under citizen concerns. Remember, when you come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. I'll move that. Second. Reading of the City Council minutes of May, set, May 9, 2022. Three is a resolution temporarily closing various streets in the downtown area September 1st to the 4th for Art Splash. <coughs> For our actions relating to grants, A is a resolution authorizing Parks and Rec to accept a well-marked foundation match grant agreement to support the Cone Mountain Bike Park. B is a resolution approving a revitalized Iowa Sound economy with the IDOT for the Cold Link Logistics Project. C is a resolution approving a transportation alternative program agreement with Simcoe Metropolitan Planning Organization for the Les Hills Scenic Trail Construction Project. Five are civil penalties and suspensions. A is a resolution assessing a $500 civil penalty against Q and Feather again for violation of beer, wine, and liquor laws. B is a resolution assessing a $500 civil penalty against Hy-Vee Main Street for violation of the beer, wine, and liquor laws. A are actions relating to bonds. A is a resolution directing the sale of GO Bonds 2022A you guys want to say anything on that? Sure. Other, other than your, the guy that helps you need to get the interest rate a little lower. I don't know what there is to say, but. Kelly Hill, city treasurer. Um, the bond sale went well today. We had six bidders on our A um, sale and two bidders on our taxable 2022B. Um, like Mayor Scott said, the interest rates were a little higher this year. 3.31% was the interest rate on our A and 3.59% up from 1.34% and then the A was um, up from 1.12% last year. Tim Oswald, um, he's with Piper Sandler. He's our financial advisor. Do you want to add anything, Tim? Kelly did a great job. Well, I don't want to get into politics, but inflation is going to play a huge role going forward if we don't get these interest rates a little bit more manageable. So, B is a resolution directing. Thanks for your work. Thank you. B is a resolution directing the sale of taxable GO bonds series 2022B. Seven are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving a contract to TR Harris Construction for the Milwaukee Road Shop Historic District Railroad and Museum Trail Improvements. I, I'm, I'm just curious, this trail's almost done. I should have contacted you on it, but isn't it? That's it, Salvatore Parks and Recreation Director. That's the city's trail. This is a separate project that'll be within the Railroad Museum. So we're just the sponsor for the Railroad's Museum project. The other project is an actual city project. Okay, because that was Steve Harris. Yes. Yep. Great. Thank you. B is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Reich Painting and Decorating to paint the Long Lines Family Rec Center second floor. C is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with CMBA Architects for the Tyson Event Center Sound System and Sound Booth Project. D is Albin Mark Albanicious. A is a resolution approving a contract to Mark Albanicious for the 9th Street and Ruston Street intersection water main replacement project. Two is a resolution approving a contract to Mark Albanicious for the boat ramp, parking lot, and trail repair project. E is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Lane Christensen Company for the well number two rehabilitation project. F is a resolution approving a second amendment to the development minimum assessment agreement for Harke Development, 705 Douglas Street. Eight are actions authorizing payment. Items A, 8A through 8C are resolution approving partial settlements of tort claims and authorizing payments. Nine are actions relating to property. Resolution A is a resolution inviting proposals for land in the central or in the combined Floyd River urban renewal area, announcing the intent to accept the proposal of aftershock ventures and scheduling a hearing. 
B is a resolution inviting proposals for land in the combined central Sioux City CBD urban renewal area and announcing the intent to accept the proposal of the City Neighborhood Services Division and scheduling a hearing. Tanner purchasing A is a resolution awarding a purchase order to High Can for aluminum sulfate for the water treatment. B is Bernie's Lawn and Garden. One is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Bernie's Lawn and Garden Center for eight 60 inch deck riding mowers. Two is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Bernie's Lawn and Garden for three 72 inch deck riding lawn mowers. Go ahead, state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Rick Robertson. I'm representing Robertson Implement, South Sioux City, Nebraska. And it's been brought up for the purchase of Gravely Mowers in the past, I think, four. So I'm just here to answer your questions. Um, I feel there's a lot of benefits to owning a Gravely Mower. Um, the city of Sioux City has, I think, five or six right now on there. And there's only, they bought four in 2018, and they've only had two warranty issues, one being a blown fuse and the other being a, I think it was a fuel gauge. And so I'm here to answer any questions you have about the Gravely product line. And verse what um, is being brought before you. I just, if I can hand this to you and you can hand it to Brian. Just for a comparison on the orders that are being brought before you today. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Um, I don't, you guys, I'm so sick of mowers, but <laughs> did, mean bull. Did, did this meet the spec that you put out? This actually surpassed, the mower that I presented surpassed the spec, and that's why I put that out there for you so you can see some of the advantages of the Gravely verse. Um, the difference on eight mowers is $171 per unit um, versus the low bid. And the specs on the sheet, just the tires alone, it's like $200 difference on never flats versus air tires. And uh, on the units that we presented, it's going to be a full suspension platform. So the operators, eight hours a day, their whole body is suspended. It's not just a suspension seat, it's a sp suspension platform. I understand, but this is government, you got a bit of spec, and if they beat, meet the spec, yes. then yep. what? Then and what I, I bid a spec and a more that they wanted. I could have bid a spec more to here, um, that, but in these days, Availability is an issue, and I could have bid that spec and said 2023 and been under the current price, but I bid something that you can have tomorrow if you want it. I've got it in stock. Okay, well, they've got to go. it too. I want to I want to hear from, did this meet the spec that you put out? Uh, Travis Baldock, Fleet Supervisor, yes, it did. Okay. So I don't know what the rest of you want to do. <clears throat> I... I, I've done this with fire trucks and other things before where I've always just asked opinion and that's what I tried doing the last few meetings that we've had about mowers is I trust you and I trust your fleet. I think Kelly gave an explanation of that we tried a different mower last time and that we wanted to improve upon the product that we had last time. So I mean if we're talking a thousand or something dollars for the life of mowers I understand and if these figures are even close to correct. I mean, I think that there's some argument to be had there. So at the end of the day, I would like to vote. It seems I, I wouldn't mind having the figure of what the overall increase would be, but it would seem to me that if there's an argument to be had, I'd rather ask what staff prefers for a mower and thinks that would be the best use by our men and women out on them. I can answer that for you as far as no, no, understand. he's not. I, and I appreciate that. I just was asking for staff. You're giving me a sales pitch. I want, yeah. I want him <laughs> staff's to. opinion. Sorry. 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 And we do appreciate you, yeah. Stan. Yeah, right. But I, that's but, great. I mean, you're here you're to sell your mower. I get yeah. that, but th that doesn't sway me. So, 
in, in a, anyway. Kelly Bach, Park Superintendent. Um, yes, we've had very good results with the Gravely mowers. Um, that's why we did some specking and they meet the specs. They are above and beyond what we asked for. Um, I've had comments about the whole suspension deck where employees are not having to wear vibration gloves and they're just fine. Normally they wear anti-vibration gloves. So, I mean, there's a benefit there, but uh, I'll leave it up to your judgment at this point. Um, you know, kind of good, the things I've looked at, the time we've spent looking, uh, trying to find the best more that we can and remain fiscally responsible. So I'll leave it. And in your opinion, that was the gravely or what you presented before, correct? That would have been my opinion, yes. Thank you. So it's Bernie's unless somebody makes a motion differently. Er I would make a motion then to stay with staff's recommendation previously, but is that is that the proper language? What do I need to say? You'd have to make a mo uh, motion to staff recommendation right now. Robertson equipment. What was previously requested? Yes. I would make a motion to stick with the forward that was previously requested by staff due to um, due to yes. the basically the increased quality of the product line and staff's recommendation previously, justification. And for clarification for the council, if, if, if staff's direction is to not select the apparent low bidder, I would recommend rejecting and rebidding. Um, for bidding purposes, the apparent low bidder that meets spec would be, would be Bernie's. It doesn't matter to me. I can vote down on this, and I guess then if it gets yeah, voted, let's do it. I was going to say if it gets voted through, then it gets voted through, and if it votes down, or do I? Do you want me to call for a reject of the bid, Mayor? What do you think? Your call. Well, because both of these would meet spec, correct? So it's like both of these would meet spec, and if we're not going to go with a low bidder, then I would just it would make more sense for me. Am I understanding that correctly? Because if both will meet, both will meet specs, staff is saying we would like for the smaller increase in money, we would prefer the better product. As long as it's a lower bidder, we're always gonna have to go with a lower bid, even though we are saying, or staff is saying it's a lesser product. So then it would make sense for me to vote no. Okay, I withdraw my- Where are you, Julie? I'm with staff's recommendation for the Gravelies. Okay, well then you register your vote, please. Oh, sorry. No, no, you just gotta tell us. You have to tell us, we're not, oh, this is- Maybe Lisa should call this vote, can you- Can you pull this one separate, Lisa? Pull it from the consent agenda and call a separate vote. Okay. Both okay. items separately. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> we need a motion. Motion and, it's motion and second with the consent agenda, but we're pulling it. Do we need another motion and second? Go ahead. You guys have to ask for it to be pulled in a separate vote. Okay. I would ask that B1 be pulled for a separate vote. I make that motion. Second. Shainer? Aye. Scott? So hold on. Wait a this minute. is to be pulled This is to pull the vote, vote, right? No, you don't have to vote on the to oh, pull okay. it. It's pulled. We're going to do a vote to vote now for we're voting. Down. Okay. okay. Just taking it out of the consent. Right. Gotcha. No. Voting on it separately. So you're voting I, you're voting for Bernie's. I want you. I thought I was voting to pull up from the consent. Right. So, so I'm voting no. <laughs> okay. Scott. Aye. Waters. No. Moore. I'm still going to abstain for conflict of interest. And O'Kane. Aye. <laughs> Two is a resolution awarding a purchase order. Wait, wait. We're two, 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 We're two, two, two and one, and so it dies. Correct, it fails. What? It fails. Correct. 
But you don't have a majority to buy either. No. Joe Yeah, I'm going to end this. B1 and 2, I'm going to vote to just delete and rebid. I think they haven't made any other motion, so I can do that. But won't we have the exact same products unless they change their specs? I understand. I just it better not change the spec. If he wants to bid, then he ought to bid the spec. Don't come in here high bid and tell me, well, I got a better machine. A spec is a spec. That's the way it works in government. You know that. You bid them all the time. And if you happen to be high because of that, that's unfortunate, but you don't get the work. But well, what's sad about that is then we get products that are less. Can I ask a question? Or lower yeah, quality. you can ask whatever you want. But My understanding is that like when a bid goes out, it doesn't, you don't have to, like on a product like this, you don't have to take low bid. Like it's a not true. Bid. It isn't? If they meet spec, that's not true. Spiro? I, I thought previously did it meet spec? Uh, I had. That's why you have a spec, Spiro. If you're telling me we can just take whatever we want to, that's not true if it meets spec. Right, meet spec. With if it so meets spec, your hands are tied. You have to take the low bid no matter what. I know with previous, it's, it's been up to council's discretion, but typically it's been what meets spec and is low bid. We occasionally give it to a local vendor if he's within 1%. But that's been our, there, I mean, that's about the only deviation that I know of, or Is because the warranty is better or because, but it, there has to be a clear cut yeah, the city's long-standing practice is to Absolute. issue it below bid. Absolutely. Now let me ask this. If the spec is above the spec that was requested, but the price is equal for less than, that, that's you fine. You can always go over the that's spec. That's fine. You can go over the spec. It doesn't have to be exact. You can go over. It's just like you're almost inviting, as long as it meets the spec, I guess, the quality doesn't matter. Hopefully that quality is good. If we well, there's Iowa up. laws to that effect. Right. That's why you have a bid policy. But we chose the spec, so the spec. And I would dispute it's it's not a matter of quality. We spec them to meet yeah, our yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah, to be a quality, quality product. meets that minimum specification, it meets our quality standard. Correct. And the Toro could be a great product as well. Well, the good news is they would be using these mowers in about 2024, the way this thing's going. <laughs> I hope you got a lot of maintenance money left in your budget because you're going to be using the heck out of it. So we I make a motion. To, rather than I make I a motion to delete the items B, I, items 10 B, one and two. But it's second. second. I second. So for clarification purposes, um, I agree that you can delete B two if that's the direction. The other item has failed, and direction can be to, given to staff to just rebid. Um, if you wanted to re-vote on it, you'd have to reconsider it and then move it. Then I'll just make my motion for B2. Would you second B2? Second. And staff can do whatever they want to at this stage. I've had enough. Well, I was going to say, because I would rather go with a Toro than a Bernie's. It doesn't make sense then to cut off your nose to spite your face and lose more on maintenance costs rather than just award it to Toro. I understand your argument. You know what I mean? And I'm saying that I would probably agree with that argument. But rather than use mowers that we're going to have to pour more money into, it makes more sense for us to go to this lower bid. So then I would change my bid to that. I mean, it's not worth losing more money. There's already a motion than... on the floor, and we've got a vote on that. So. Okay. Scott? Aye. Waters? No. Moore? Abstain. Can I get clarification on the motion again? The motion is to delete the item from the agenda. And I'm saying I would like to leave it there and just vote for the Toro so that they can at least have new mowers going into the season. Rather because if they have to rebid, it's not going to happen this year? No, it'll happen. They'll put oh. a bid tomorrow and they'll get some. All right. Get bid well, I just want to be clear. Yes, I. More? Kane again. <laughs> Sorry, okay, oh, I got lost. Well, this is this is on B two, correct? Right. This, this is on B two. So B one has been rejected. So you got to it's fake. You got to bid that again. Right. Right. Okay. And nobody was on. Okay. Oh, like, right. Right. Aye. We're moving on. Number. Shainer. Aye. 
Number 11, applications for beer and liquor license. See the list come forward if you have questions. 12, beer board, commission, and committee meetings. See the list come forward if you have questions. That concludes the consent agenda. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? You reject the bid. Rejected them both. both. Yeah. Well, that's a rejection. And the second <laughs> item was deleted. So well, now we'll rebid and we'll see it again. Yes. Hopefully next week. Or the weekend. It'd like to be a few weeks. Voting electronically. Yes. You have mine, don't you? Yes. Thank you. Passes 5 0. Hearings a resolution, hearing and resolution amending the budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. I'll move that. Second. Public hearing is now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Do they pay us for anything, any of these, other than the franchise? Passes 5014 is hearing resolution accepting the proposal of Mid-America Energy for an underground electric easement in the combined central Sioux City CBD urban renewal area property at 1132 and 1110 Larson Park Road. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard? Public hearing is now open. Do we have anybody here from Mid-American? No, I don't think so. They never come because you have to give it to them. It's too bad. It'd be nice to ask them about... Uh when they're gonna upgrade some of our infrastructure around town. They don't have to, they've, downtown they've upgraded a bunch of it because they've down to one guy working underground in Sioux City, Iowa, which is unbelievable. Hearing is close. Passes 5-0. 15 is a hearing and resolution accepting the proposal of Crown Castle Fiber for lease of land in combined central Sioux City CBD urban renewal area, property at 401 Gordon Drive. I'll move that. Second. Public hearing is now open. Somebody explain this to me. They're paying us a lot of money, it looks like, to wire our Tyson Event Center. What am I missing? Good afternoon, Enzo Carinante, Assistant General Manager, Director of Marketing for the Tyson Event Center, uh, 401 Gordon Drive. Uh, to answer your question, Mayor, yes, uh, this is a deal. They are investing in the infrastructure to put in uh, antennas and cellular uh, infrastructure to help with the capacity issues, um, cellular coverage within the venue, Tyson Event Center. Uh, they go out, they oversee getting, it's a neutral system, so they'll go to all the cellular providers, uh, provide them the, the avenue to participate in the system. And this doesn't start until they have at least one wireless provider, right? I read Correct. that right. Yep. So they have done a walkthrough of the facility. They've looked at certain areas just to kind of get some preliminary ideas. Um, but based on feedback with the cellular providers, knowing what they need to kind of build into it, that's kind of how the, the construction of it will transpire. And they, are they gonna put antennas on roofs and things like that? Nope, nope, it's all in t internal of the venue. Um, it, it would look like an IT tower, um, kind of in storage spaces around the facility. And my understanding, this is pretty common practice in other venues yep. across the country? Yeah, across the country, um, we, there's a number of Spectra venues that, we, that Crown is working with as well. Uh, we've done a lot of homework in speaking with those venues, kind of see what the downside is. We have found nothing that is downside. There's no risk to the city, to the venue. Uh, it's all managed through Crown Castle. They'll handle the infrastructure, all the setup, everything that they would need, the maintenance of it, 
uh, they would oversee everything. It's just more their opportunity to make money off the sponsorship or of that Correct. side of it. Correct. And then our patrons of the Dyson Event Center just benefit because they get better phone connectivity. Correct, yes. And they're utilizing the space within the facility. So they have an opportunity to make more money. They're investing in our Thank you. Okay, anyone else we heard? Hearing is closed. Passes 5016's resolution awarding a purchase order for, to Grove's emergency lighting installation for the light siren controller kits. I'll move that. Second. I want to go back to 15. Go ahead. <clears throat> Spear Oval Hill is purchasing manager. I just wanted to point out in the RCA that uh, there was about 31 items that were bid out on this. And uh, when we bid them out, when I put the RCA together, I put it in categories. And on one of the categories, uh, there was a local vendor that was within 2% of the non-local vendor. Uh, the reason I did it that way is because not every vendor could bid on every single item. So I just wanted to point that out. Thanks for doing that. Now it's 16 or 17. I still have 16. 16. We're voting on 16. 17. Oh. I thought it was two. Hang on, I got a question for you guys, Lee. Passes 5-0. I'm always suspicious. I know you do, can't believe that, but <laughs> I'm always suspicious when now you stand there and say that we've got this deal with this crown all over the place. Did you seek any other vendors or was this single source? because that's baloney if it was, especially if you've got a sweetheart deal going with these guys in other venues. I don't really like that at yep. all. We have, uh, we have seen other proposals as well. This one financially was the most beneficial to the city. Well, how do but, I know that? Uh, I'd be happy to provide you the other, the other proposals as well if you'd like. Well. How you doing? Tim Savona, general manager at the Tyson Event Center. Uh, just to I add understand. on, we currently have a system like this in the Tyson Event Center. Uh, the city, uh, I think it's been here for about 20 years. It's pretty outdated. We received the Tyson Event Center $1 per year for a lease on that system. We saw an opportunity because of what we've seen in other venues across the country where this is a revenue stream for the venue. We have zero dollars at stake here. It's, it's a straight line payment to the Tyson, to the city. It's the city's contract. And we do get the 100000 well, we get, we get a money upon signature, money upon delivery of the system, and then every time a wireless carrier is signed up, we get another bump. Um, so That's not the question. It's in an urban renewal area. You have to make it available to other vendors. That's my question. Did you follow? Yeah. So for clarification, there was a 30-day time period announcing the intent to accept the proposal around Castle. Uh, a date was set for the receipt of other bids. I'm not aware that any other bids were submitted. Okay. Well, now, wait a minute. You just said there were others. I misspoke by the, the bids. When we did our research, we looked at multiple different carriers as we started to do some initial research, and finding Crown Castle was the most beneficial for the city to go proceed with. That is... So you didn't put it out for bid? But that's when they started the 30 yeah, day. Let me take a shot. We, we seek them out. Let me take a shot at, as it's in <laughs> well, it. You, got, you, you know, I, you got to follow rules when and you we do did. this. And it doesn't look like we did. And we did. Well, how did you do that? Because As I we really often like do, we did proposals. This isn't a TIF district, so we did a, a notice that we were going to have a public hearing and announcing the intent of Crown Castle for, for this system that then said, I believe it's a 30 day period where other proposers could also propose. And none this did. starts it today. What's that? This starts at 30 days or you already are past the 30 No, we already published for the, for the hearing for today. Yeah, it was previously. The, the original um, resolution went to the council on April 11th announcing the intent and also setting uh, the bid due. I date. bet we did a great job of putting this out for people to know we were doing this. We put it in the Sioux City Journal and that's it to make sure that we didn't have other bidders, but 
Do we do that for other projects? Yeah, we do. We Spiro goes online and puts stuff out there so other people know there's stuff like this out there. Absolutely. 17, resolution awarding a purchase order to Caltech to, for add-on equipment for police and vehicles. I'll move that. I do not. Right up the 16 and 17 information was the same. Yeah. And so Spiro's comments really that's did right. go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, I thought we were on 17. It's, it's one right up there. Five zero. 18 discussion of sidewalk waiver request for 3650 Correctionville Road. We can discuss it a lot, but I have no idea how you think or why with no sidewalks in the area. Make them sign a deal when there's sidewalks on either side, they got to do it, but I don't know. Well, we, we you know, when this came through as a development, one of the key things that was council address was that they wanted sign when, it, when it was a development so, so I changing agreed. it to a single family residence we didn't feel that we should go against what the council had pushed forward with wanting sidewalk that's fine and that's right the council will have a vote so i mean that's that that was one of our thoughts too was to say if they develop another lot along here then then go ahead and put the sidewalk in if he if he wants a waiver but uh, i mean part of the issue is with this property is the non-development ready piece of property so using that as an excuse on why I can't develop sidewalks shouldn't be because, and that's the hard thing with sidewalk waivers is everyone points to some other parcel that got one is, well, if they got one for this reason, why, and if we're gonna use, it's too expensive for me to put sidewalks in, lots of people can claim that. It has not, nothing for me to do with the cost. It has to do with work, putting, it's like telling me that I have to have a sidewalk in today when it goes nowhere. Yeah, and, and, and that's, but that was the direction at when they came forward with the development and also the, the uh, uh, property owners along Green, I believe it is, that said that they were thinking about developing and wanted additional sidewalk. They own the adjacent parcel to the west that then connects up to the Greenville area. So when they developed that parcel. And by they, you mean Moose? Yep, the, yeah. the, the, same, the same property owner, Moose, yep, owns yep. the parcel, the large parcel to the west. Yeah, I'm so I mean, I'm okay if we want to. I'm comfortable with it. We're, we're comfortable with a, an agreement that if they build another parcel lot on this parcel, that then they'd go through and put sidewalk across the whole thing. That'd be a perfectly acceptable. Um, that, but we've had no contact with Mr. Moose since the time he received the reduc rejection of his uh, sidewalk waiver. And to be clear, the property just to the west of his west property has sidewalk, correct? I don't know if the when you get right to the when it was something like yeah there's there's a there's a there's a distance that there's sidewalk on the south side but not on the north side but it, you're getting into a highly dense populated area once you get to the you got to get to the top of the hill to the, populate the, no I'm talking going to the west there's yeah, 140 yeah. acre track between the property he's de developing and where it gets not anyway. Hello, uh, Sam Moose, uh, uh, 3225 46th Street, Sioux City, Iowa. I actually prepared um, a statement that just to, I mean, just to first, this is, you know, after months and months of frustration, this isn't necessarily about not having a sidewalk and, and me not wanting a sidewalk. This is not approved legal sidewalk. I've done uh, a lot of research and we are gonna be shortly splitting off 23 acres for my daughter so this is gonna be coming up pretty quickly and I would like to resolve this sidewalk thing now to, to where we aren't going through this every time if I can take a little bit to do that or if you it's pretty it's pretty ridiculous to me when you look at the code and look what they're proposing me do meets meets no standard and um, well get going your three minutes are rolling bud so get going well here's a letter so you me and look at it yourselves. Uh, Dave, can you pull it up on Beacon? Is this what you sent out to earlier? Yeah, I yeah. Was it wasn't real clear on the one can that I just sent out. From you? Yeah. Thanks. I'll just jump email. through. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, I read it. Email. Yeah, I read I it. Too. Thank you. <laughs> and we did. We did I read, I read your email. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I 
I mean, my biggest thing is that um, if you went to the back page, that's your sidewalk standard, and they're proposing a class A sidewalk standard, which if you read all this, I don't need to go through it all again, but this yeah. meets mm -hmm. zero criteria of the class A sidewalk. It, uh, B and C is not feasible. I mean, to spend two or three hundred thousand dollars to, I mean, widen that street. I mean, if you've read everything, I don't want to go through it all over again, but to me, there's just absolutely no grounds to try to build a sidewalk there with the, how that road's built and the infrastructure that's there I'm going to be tore out. I mean, just to point out, Mid-America won't even put their their underground wire there because it's there's not enough room with the culverts and that they I have to uh, sign an easement to go onto my property, which I mean, that's a, how big's a wire and they're, they're not comfortable using that and I'm supposed to put a sidewalk that meets no None of the criteria, not one single criteria of a, side, side, uh, a type A sidewalk does it meet. And I just don't know how that's all said okay to, to try to, and then some of my other frustrations going back to a 24 foot road, I want to put in that met every criteria that the engineers would not allow. But I guess I'll just leave it for you if you have any questions. If you read the email, I can answer and make it. But. But I, I do want to say I don't think this, this isn't about not wanting a sidewalk. If I could have a nice, sidewalks are wonderful. I wish we had sidewalks through the whole town. I do think the infill, you know, which we do, and it's usually not much of a cost, a lot of times it doesn't make a lot of sense. I wish we had some kind of system, even like when we'll put the sidewalk in, but if it ever did go through, elevations between the two lots would have to change and they would have to be brought, you know, up and down together. And so often we have a sidewalk that really, is just checking that box that they put a sidewalk in, but if it ever did, it, it's not feasible. You, um, but anyway, that's something that would be nice to... Well, I'm a sidewalk guy, so you're not going to win that argument with yeah, me. Yeah, I'm with you. I just think there I, should be some sort of... I, w I don't know how... Sam, it would be nice to see somehow that these actually get used and could be used, and, and I'm not trying to... Not but everybody sidewalk. always tells me nobody will use that sidewalk, but everywhere that they told the me that they use it. I would use the sidewalk somewhere. We'd love to go for a walk. I mean, I have, you Well, know but I mean? Sam, that's what I'm asking you is, because I think staff's argument is, well, what's the threshold? You know, because they're okay with saying, fine, if you develop this without a sidewalk, but you develop the next one, we would like to see a sidewalk. So I'm just asking you, well, because you there are sidewalks somewhat to adjacent to your property. This, this road is 20 foot wide and has no curb and they're uh, to propose to put a class a sidewalk does not belong out there no so the only way to put in a sidewalk is to widen the street and it's a has a 35 foot right away to widen the street which would take hundreds of thousands of dollars and i don't think that should be a homeowner's responsibility that's part yeah. of the street and the infrastructure that was put in originally no, I understand. and the sidewalk would most definitely be tore out before it would ever be tied into everything anything done to the west the only water line even close by is on the east end, that sidewalk would be tore out. If anything's done with the street, that sidewalk would be tore out. I mean, there's water drainage. I mean, again, I, don't, I could go through all the issues. That's a code violation. You can't dump water over the sidewalk, which was proposed to do. And, and all those things, it just, the, it's not a matter of not wanting sidewalks. It's just it's not feasible to put in a sidewalk here uh, without a, a huge... Undertaking, and, and, yeah, yeah, financial, true. I understand. Uh, yeah, and I don't know how that would be I mean, what's next, the gravel road? Well, you're gonna have to pave the road so we can put in gutters and, and put in a sidewalk. You know, I'm just, and I am being, but at what point do you say it's not feasible? I mean, is it 10% of the price of the home? You know, I mean, is it, I don't know, but it should be some sort of standard. And um, I have or what you're telling have... us today is with this waiver, it's for your own, a single home, that's it. But you know. I know I'm, I'm splitting off 23 acres, so still stay, we won't be rezoned. So today is about one, but, but that's you, you said, already well, know. If we're coming tomorrow, we're gonna have the same conversation, but she's still right on that ravine, it's a still the same thing. I mean, it, it literally is, my, Bacon Creek will not design the sidewalk, they said it can't be done, you know, and so I don't know how, how you're supposed to do it. What, you know, Babe, do you want to address that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's easy to say it can't be done if I don't, without making any improvements to the right of way. That's what they're saying. Is if I don't make any improvements to the right of way, it can't be done. What, you guys are proposing I, actually, the, 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 they're proposing a class A sidewalk. Can, can, I, can I finish? I thought you were. Can I finish? Yeah. So the, their their proposal is that yeah, I can't put it in put in a sidewalk without improvements to the right of way. That's where I started this discussion. I said they bought a site that was not development ready. To make it development ready, there has to be an investment. 
and that's part of it. And as far as the Class A sidewalk goes, it says in there, and I think you put the justification of uh, generally and uh, usually or typically, whatever. Typically. Typically. typically yeah, and we have, we have Class A sidewalks all throughout our town. Lorraine Avenue from Lakeport all the way to, to uh, East Middle School is Class A sidewalk. What's special about a, a Class A sidewalk? Be allowed. We're trying to Excuse me? What's the special camp. about a Class A sidewalk? It, that, all it does is describe this location, that it's up against the curb. Oh, okay. And typically, it's in a downtown area where it goes against the curb all the way to the property line. And it has the Class B and Class C sidewalks are generally located off one class B is considered one is typically one foot off of the right of way and class C is right up against the right of way. Again, we have lots of class B sidewalk that isn't one foot off the right of way. So just by going in and saying, well, that's the code. No, there's all different scenarios where it, where it meets. Again, it comes to the improvements that need to be done the right of way. And, and I just talked to Jeff because we, we, we met with, you know, to sit there and say developers don't improve the right of way. Owl Creek is looking at doing improvements on Owl Creek Drive in more than 30,000 per unit so they can have a street that meets all of our design standards. And this isn't a street. I'm not developing Critchfield Road. I mean, if, if I was putting a street in... They're not developing Owl Creek Drive. It's an existing right of way road that they want to improve for their development. That's what the difference is. They understand they have to improve the roadway because they, the, the, their lot up against that road isn't development ready. Or development. I mean, what point is it? I mean, should a guy spend three hundred thousand dollars? So, plus the sidewalk. It's, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it, especially when it's not. It's not happening. It's not going anywhere. But and, and again, on staff's staff's desire on this was based on our last meeting and the council's desire to have sidewalk across here. We didn't feel we could issue a sidewalk waiver without, without bringing it to the attention of the council. I had, a, I had the similar concern when we were talking about the development before about which comes first. I mean, don't put the sidewalks in and then have to come in and, and make improvements to Correctionville Road and widen it, take the sidewalks out. I mean, I, that wasn't making any sense to me either. So, but I don't know what the plans are for widening, widening Correctionville Road. We, 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 we acquired Correctionville Road, oh, I think I gave you, it was like November 1954 from the DOT. It was old Highway 20. Oh, yeah. And when Highway 20 got moved over to Gordon Drive, guess what? We got Correctionville Road. And it was built to an old highway standard. So again, the parcels along there really aren't development ready. If you're lucky enough that you had a parcel, some of these ones to the east that are just a chop here and a chop there that you could build, that's fine, but unfortunately this parcel isn't in that shape where it's development ready right up to the right-of-way line, especially to today's standards. Which to your point is the same with Elk Creek is they would have had to have known that when they bought the property that they were going to have to substantially invest in to bring it up to the code that would meet, is your argument. Yep. We would Does that make sense, Sam? It is does. that they're I mean, saying I, when Elk Creek bought that property, you know, if someone wants to buy a development and do something, and they have to I, know they have to bring it up to a standard. And I get when you're doing a development that you're, you're going to have to have access to whatever sewer or whatever, and that could be dig funds and all those things, but this is just a single project, whether it's two but or three lots. the problem lots, is we don't know what 20 years from now is, Sam. The problem is you drive up on the north side, not very far from where your brother lives, neighborhoods full of no sidewalks where kids walk in the street unacceptable because of somebody came to that microphone and said if you make me put sidewalks in i can't develop the property that's the problem and then we get 40 years later like who was that dumb council that allowed that to happen so where do we that's my problem so i have always been and will always be for sidewalks i'm not the kind of guy that thinks kids should have to walk in the street to get to school. We used to have a school board that had enough courage to bring us a list of these every year and every year we worked on that. But we don't have that. So now we've got neighborhoods. Out, I grew up in Morningside, down by the old Morningside Country Club. Not a sidewalk in that neighborhood. I, I agree. I, I wish we, if we could do sidewalks but putting a sidewalk that goes nowhere to spend that kind of and that's not even a sidewalk, sidewalk always a sidewalk yeah. normally in a new development goes nowhere well it I mean, never does least, in the beginning it goes nowhere but sooner or later it does right. go somewhere but to me then let's 
implement some kind of program where we're, we're improving so many miles of sidewalk a year and, and, and it gets assessed to the, the owners <coughs> and we actually have a sidewalk that ties together, that works, that, that can be used. I'm not- We are, we have a sidewalk a program that, right now. Well, uh, yeah, our sidewalk program addresses deficiencies in our current sidewalk. We have a ramp program to put in new ramps. We haven't done a we, sidewalk hearing in this city for 20 years. Yep, and I was just gonna say, well, we, and we at one point were using the deficient sidewalk to claim missing sidewalk and we were told that that was not really the intent of the, uh, in the verbiage, so we were told that we would have to do a whole hearing to assess and sidewalks. J just to jump back to this Class A sidewalk, because that's what I'd have to put in, it meets none of the criteria. Maybe there is some in town, but that doesn't make it okay that we can just start changing the standard of what a sidewalk is. I wouldn't feel comfortable being right on the edge. That doesn't have any answer for what we do with the snow where it can't be. We have no answer for what it would take where somebody falls off that sidewalk or into that deep ravine. This is not a safe, good sidewalk. If it was just a matter of putting a sidewalk in, I, I promise you I would not be here. I would I'd be putting the sidewalk in, but this is not a sidewalk that is gonna be safe, it's not gonna be usable, and it's not gonna, unless something's work and it's done, and where the whole section, and as far as going back to the west, it only gets worse. There's actually steeper, um, steeper banks and the, there's more drainage that drains into the road. I mean, I would think a criteria is to have a sidewalk, you have to have curb, gutter, and storm. You can't be having uh, storm drains going across, you know, I mean, so I gotta develop this, or redevelop this 100 foot road to put my house in, it just makes no sense. I mean, at what point, like going back to my, me being facetious and saying, well, you're gonna have to gravel the road, so you're gonna have to pay this graveled road so you can put a sidewalk and build a house on it. I mean, it's, to me, that's the, the next extreme. I mean, it's not, that's the, there's not another step from this being a feasible sidewalk to having to require somebody to pave the road to have a, a, a good sidewalk to provide the drainage and the storm runoff. And, and like I, I said earlier again, this is again, goes back to the lot not being development ready. We'd be more than happy to give them a side, or recommend a sidewalk waiver with the provision that if another house is built on the lot, that at that point they put sidewalk in because then it's gonna be chopped into one lot at a time and always saying, well, I can't develop the sidewalk. Where I'm a one lot person, yep. one home person. We have but, lots that have been developed, Dave, that we didn't have a formal hearing on it, but we didn't proceed because it was cost prohibitive to the, to the neighbors. It was a developed, it's a development that's fully built out. So, and it's there, but we didn't go, we didn't proceed with the sidewalk in that case. Well, that, yeah, that was where we're going to retrofit. You're talking about up by Country Club and, uh, mm -hmm. yep. Where we, well, we so were, we, we were going to go to the, be yeah, because like the one guy would have to spend, you know, on an existing home, exactly. Yeah, so there are cases where it can't be built. It can be built, but it's cost prohibitive for any property owner to pay that kind of money. But that's where we kind of differ between already established lots and, and personal looking to develop lots. But at what point is a development? If I'm splitting off 23 acres, that's hardly a development. If I have 150 acres and I split off four lots that are that size, that's not a development when the only access is off Cartoonville Road. And I'm just trying to save the argument for here next month when I uh, apply to, to split the, that, that uh, 23 acres, and I'm gonna be here again, so I'm just trying to When you'd be able to split that. it, it's if there would be a home built on it. Then yeah, that's, that's what it would be. It'd be a, and that's what it, the whole purpose is, my daughter's gonna build her house on that 23 acres. But, so I'm just trying to save that same argument now, where really if she has 500 it, foot then of it, Then there'll be inch, another split off, and then there'll be another split off. And it's, but the whole point is, I don't care if there is. But that's a problem. There's going to be more split offs. You're going to come back again and there will be another split off. And you'd say, well, you didn't require it here. So why do I have to have it here? Come on. Now but that's the whole not. Thing, if this is only the, all you're doing is, is circumventing the development agreement or the, 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 the plot you had. The, that's the all the you're doing. The difference is, this is not the side to, to, to improve the street would literally be $200,000, $300,000 to put in a regular sidewalk. The answer to put in this sidewalk that you proposed is not the an answer. So if you're gonna require it to be two or, to, to put that kind of money into, which is to me is the city's property, it's, it, that culverts and all that need work, it's, gosh, how many years old? I mean, and you couldn't build that road to the standard that it, today that is built now. That those, going down those culverts are literally, Gosh, got maybe a one-to-one -one, um, pitch going down. There's no way you could do that. So to, you'd have to re, 
improve everything, not just the, the fact of putting in a sidewalk. And to say to put a class A in and, and not with have any answer for the water runoff or for snow or which let there me, isn't let me an ask you a for. question because I'm giving you way more time you bought this property did you ever come down and talk to people about it or did you just buy it and then think you're going to be I, I, I from day one I came in with a couple different proposed ideas the 85 did, lots did, didn't, did you mean, already own the property when you came to City Hall um I think you did I don't know. I, I, I'm in here a lot, so I would be surprised nope. that I didn't talk to Jeff about it before, but um, I, I can't swear that I did. But I mean, my whole thing was originally that if it was one or two houses, that was my intent. I wasn't, wasn't set on that I had to develop it, and that's why I backed away from developing it when it got too difficult. So I, I don't know. I just, but it, it just, I think Sam, if it's the not a safe you. sidewalk, at what point do you, as a homeowner responsible for improving the infrastructure that's there, at uh, what percent? I mean, I would think there has to be some sort of standard that it can't exceed, I would think 10% of the cost of a house would be ridiculously high and you couldn't even begin to. This would be a third, this would be as much as my daughter's house, it would be the same cost that she would have to build her house as it would be to put in a sidewalk. You, you, I don't think it could be done for two, $300,000. Okay, Dave, how far off the roadway, right of way can the 20 foot right of way, how far off can a sidewalk be constructed? Sidewalk can be constructed anywhere between the right of way line and the, and the, and the edge of the road. There's, right no, there's no standard so that you it can't has go, to. You can't go on your own private property for the sidewalk? Well, if they wanted to dedicate it as right of way, they could. They could dedicate it right of way and put it out there. Well, I w the right of way line's 20 feet, though, isn't it? This one's 35. 35 this feet. This one's wider. Because right it was, like I said, this is old state highway right of way. Oh, it's 20 foot, 20 feet is the pavement or the, it's like for the traveled way. Kind of hard to see, but I'm measuring right there. It was about built for Model A's. The road ends up out just east, just west of Mobile. Hmm. You can I, take it all the way to the right. I'd the still be Mobile. driving my Model A today if I could maintain you, it. That's what it was built for. But what I'm, what I'm asking, Mayor, is, I mean, if you have to go, I wouldn't want to walk on a sidewalk by this road, right by this road. There's no, there's no curb. There's nothing to keep a driver from. Otherwise, you're walking, Rather than on walking the in the road. Otherwise, you're walking on the road, though. Well, so you still have it's still high risk, but it's not as high as being on the road. Mm -hmm. But it's still high risk. Mm -hmm. Walking along this road, you're telling me it's not high risk. There's no, no curb. I'd rather be on the side than be in the middle. Well, that's what I'd rather be about 30 feet off. I, I still argue to me a sidewalk that's not safe, that makes you feel safe is worse than, if you're on the road, at least you know well, you're that's aware. what you I think. You gotta be aware of your sidewalk. If you're on a sidewalk, you think that you're not gonna think you're gonna fall off 20 feet to the other direction or that a car that goes literally two feet off the road on a 20 foot wide road. And the other thing too, to maintain that sidewalk and, and you know people will be driving on it and that's right there on the road. It's just, and, and again, it have no answer for snow and for the fence or railing. I mean, none of those things are a standard sidewalk that should, would be normally required. It, it just, it's just you, you completely gotta, you infeasible walk up, to You me. go up to Hamilton Boulevard, you go south of the school on 36th Street. The sidewalk from the Hamilton Boulevard is only about that much. There's no place to stack, stack any snow there either, but you know what? We got a sidewalk. Now we have to clean the dirt off once in a while. <clears throat> but people walk very close to Hamilton Boulevard going 45 miles an hour, and there's no snow hardly at all. So, so let's just don't do any sidewalks in. I mean, that's the problem. I, I think there needs to be some sort of standard of what's reasonable. We have a standard. In. You build a house, you put a sidewalk in. That's the standard. You don't like it, I get that, but that's the standard. How can you require a, a, a sidewalk that meets no criteria, none of the safety criteria? So I mean, I'm saying next, so then I'm, I'm gonna have to put in $300,000 to widen that street and put in a, a safe sidewalk? I mean, at what point is it, is it allowed or not gonna be? I mean, at that well, point, then no house can ever be built without okay. putting it. There you guys is have no any such questions? thing as a sidewalk waiver. Okay, do you have any questions? Do you want this brought back to, for a vote, up or down on whether he has to have sidewalks? Well, we're doing well, first. We're doing a waiver, aren't we? I mean, aren't we? Is a discussion on the waiver? It's a discussion. Do you want to bring it back? Is what I'm asking. It's not on the agenda. 
Was a vote required? There's no vote. It's just a presentation and discussion. No, but if right we put it, but is it required that we have yeah. to have it on agenda to vote it up or vote it down on a sidewalk waiver? Do we, we vote on city request. policy is you have a side? Correct. I'm guessing that's why Dave put it We've denied the waiver. Yeah. So right. I, I would say if they don't bring it back, the denial would stand. I would get, I would. And, and I, would have I will have to look at the code to see what the appeal process is on a denial of waiver. But the council could direct a vote if they so choose. But I will look at the code. To well, see. the waiver was denied based on what you thought city council wanted. Well, that was, the, ba that was, that was the main basis. So but I mean, what, that's a we, little bit different. We, we believe that the parcel could be developed in a way that you could create a safe sidewalk. The developer doesn't want to do the work to create the which would involve doing some drainage modifications and all that. We understand that. But that's when you buy an unimproved parcel, that's what you're going to run into. You, so you have to stick by your denial then is what you're talking about. Even what though we're, you said we, a couple of times earlier, you're okay with the waiver on this. I mean, we, we thought of a, a compromise position be if, if we really want to do it, to waive it with the idea that if he ever builds another lot on there, then it's really like the mayor said he's just trying to circumvent the development process then make him put the sidewalk in and that's what i'm saying i'm comfortable and he's already said he's going to come back in a month and, and, 23 and split, acres. And split a split his parcel off so oh. so do, do you want to look into it nicole to see if we have to what the appeal pro, formal appeal process is for a waiver yes if there is one that's noted Okay. We don't need a so we're going to check no. to see what the appeal process is to the denial of the waiver. Whether we have to put it on an agenda, on our agenda, to vote it up or vote it down. Is that correct? Am I stating that correct? correct? And what was the time period for the waiver? When was the waiver? I'd have to look. I didn't. Bring, I thought I'd printed it off, but I didn't. Um, yeah. So we'll provide information. It was a couple weeks ago. I think the waiver or the denial was sent. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. From legal. Citizen concerns, anyone to be heard? <clears throat> Afternoon. Hey, Rick Bertrand, 1501 PV Street. Um, I own a Gravely and my brother owns a Toro right over the road. I've always said I was smarter, so the Gravely is a better machine. So anyway, you do what now? I own a Gravely mower. And, and his brother, brother owns a Toro. Toro. Has a Toro. Thanks, Dave, Rick. Pull, Appreciate you know, that. You want to pull that up, and then hey, if you want to get around the sidewalk issue, what other communities do is they pass a local ordinance that says if there's certain size lots on infill, if there's sidewalk on both sides, like a septic, you can't sell the property until you actually put the. It goes back to the existing property owners. You can solve that problem with infill. Um, if there's if there's sidewalks on both sides of the property. Like I said, you can't sell a property with a septic. You have to update the certain septic things. That's a state code, but you can do a local ordinance on the sidewalk. So there is a solution. Well, there. if you go build in an infill project, you have to do a sidewalk because you don't agree. But I'm saying that the, you could put that on the existing the existing owner of the home right. that's trying to sell it at that point. And if there's sidewalks on both sides, you can require they have to infill it first before they can sell the property. How would that impact this one, though? On this one, nothing. I'm just saying is that there's a bunch of infill lots. They brought lots. the infill situation yeah. anyway, up. Anyway, you're going to pull up that property. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's up here. Thanks. Uh, um, what I'm here for today in my dirty clothes is uh, this is about the property. Dave's going to pull it up. It's the mid-American site that is going to come before the grading plan out there off of 28th Street and the property that's adjacent to that. Um, mid-American um, is going to, looks like they're going to get their grading permit probably in the next 10 days or so. And just for the record, I'm in no position at all um, and, and for fairness, I, I represent the property to the south of this property, and we had a petition that went in front of the, um, the borough pit, the, the, the approval uh, board, that represented about 700, the property owners represented about 700 acres. There's about three of us behind, behind the property. Um, where my concerns are right now is just by a minute, no... Just a minute. We're, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna abstain because I did your parents' return and I did sure. Lieber's return. Where's 28th Street, though? Cause I right along the north end. North. Edge. Okay, so then you're looking back. See, see, you're going to the bypass. That little, that little, little jog right, right there. there takes you to the bypass. Well, that's right how there. to drive. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so 28th Street's right here, yeah, and then the break yeah. off is going there's outer to drive. Mid American. Is that yeah, outer Mid American drive. site <clears throat> is right there at that intersection, basically. Yep. Of yes. Okay, gotcha. I and just then you've got this. You've got that city parcel that basically. Yeah, runs Lieber to the east. and the city-owned parcels that Correct. go in between here. They're going between where? Yeah. 
to the that's the edge of that's the edge of mid-americans property the right there and the, the, okay go ahead so that's city property oh, okay, right there i see what you're you saying know okay. at, everybody know yeah. where we're at right now mm -hmm. on okay. that on the bypass right. so where the thing is and again mid-american announcement out there it's adjacent adjacent to the jail we're excited to have the infrastructure we're all on well water out there we're all on septic um, any infrastructure in the next 20 years will be more than welcome so by no means am i um, even when I went and started talking about this project, I'm against the development part of it. So as a city, what we've seen is that in the past, when it comes to borough pits and it comes to other things, is we let these guys, these dirt guys go in there, make a mess under the umbrella of development. They walk away seven, eight, nine years later, and we end up with a mess. This, this 28th Street corridor clearly is the future of Sioux City and the development on that side for big box retail, for Amazon, for Gap. There's just, there's just a lot of opportunity on that corridor. We embrace it as property owners out there. We know that, you know, I may never see it, but my kids might see it. Where my concern is, is what's going to happen now with the grading permit. So we're talking about two pieces of property. We're talking about the Lieber property, which is the adjacent property. Um, to the mid-American property. That butts into us. It's about 57 acres. Um, it's basically a mountain that goes into a hole is what it does, and it's um, from, a le from a leveling standpoint. Um, they have applied uh, three times for a burrow pit on that property. Are okay? you going to take us there, Dave? Yeah. Thank you. So the case that, I'm, that I made to the, to the, to the committee before, the, uh, the zoning committee and everything, was that this is not a developable piece of property at this point. Probably won't be a developable piece of property in the future. There's a reason why it's pasture. Um, it has huge environmental issues on it when it comes to artesian wells. The reason that MidAmerican purchased the property the, the way they did, as you see MidAmerican's property line, is that they were going to buy that full 80 when you talk to Mr. Salisbury at MidAmerican and everything. The reason they did what they did is because they are avoiding that waterway, which is an underground riverway, which is our waterway, to our, to which we are on our wells and our, and our artesians and other things out in that area. So the issue that's, that's coming up now is... Uh, we came in and put our case forward as property owners on why this should not be a borough pit by Mr. Lieber. I have nothing against Mr. Lieber or his property. He's not a developer. He is a dirt poacher. That's what these guys do. I know them all. This is what they do. Again, I'm not knocking it. For 10 years, we have not had borough pits in the city of Sioux City, and it's been very successful. We've worked off of grading permits. They came in and applied for a borough permit. It was denied not once, twice. They brought it to the council, pitched it to you guys, you guys kicked it back to the committee again, and it was rejected for a third time, saying this is an undevelopable, feasible site for actual economic development, okay? So it's been denied as an as a unconditional use permit on this property. The city of Sioux City owns the frontage on this property. So now what has happened is MidAmerican now has got, it with their grading permit through their general, they're, they're now, the, the grading permit they're settling on is going to spill onto about 100 feet, as you can see, onto the city of Sioux City property where they're going to get uh, easement rights, grading rights, and they're asking for, and then they're going to, they're going to spill onto the Lieber property. The key to a dirt guy, guys, as everyone knows, and Mr. Mr. Fenton did, got it, got it through up the, up the street and others. The key to a dirt guy is you got to get the blade in the ground. Once you get a cut, once you get a cut, you've got, you've got the city by the city of Sioux City for eight to 10 years, because you can always come back a year to two years later on the renewals and say, let me clean it up. We had one on, on Floyd, Floyd Boulevard for 20 years that they kept saying, we got to keep going because we got to clean it up. Dirt guys are not developers. Okay, so what's happening now on this site is you're going to now they're going to come in under the umbrella of a, of a mid-American grading pit, and we're going to we're going to straddle this property line. And we're going to cut on dirt where we right now we're, we're headed to court on an injunction for environmental issues right now because our fear is that you're going to disrupt the artesian the water system that we have out there. I did need to have you wrap it up, Rick. What's, yeah, well, again, I, I called ahead, Mr. Mayor, and I want to make sure we're on the same page here because what's going to happen is we're going to get a mid-American grading permit through under this, this grading permit. They're gonna get into this hill onto their property, the Lieber property, and then it's gonna create a cut. And they're going to come back and then they're going to apply for a grading permit on their property under the umbrella of, under the umbrella of development. This was never going to be a development piece okay, of property. Gotta, this is going to be a borough pit. I, gotta have, I mean, we gotta be fair to everybody when we limit it to three minutes. But Nicole does wanna ask you a question. So um, Sam's was a pretty long three minutes, so I just want to go Sure, it, just because it isn't an agenda system. item on sure. to allow discussion, but you had indicated you're seeking an injunction. Is that an injunction that would also be sought against the city of Sioux City? You know what, again, all we're doing right now is we're exploring our options. That's why I came in and talked to Gordon the other day and we called down there and talked about it. Um, my, the, to, to wrap it up, and I want to wrap this up real clearly, is 
What's going to happen is they're going to apply then the Lever property for a develop for a for a grading permit. The grading process does not require any type of notification notification to the city, requires no notification to any landowners, no environmental studies. It basically gives them then a blank slate within a, within a year to go there under, under, under some cheap little development that shows some boxes that you're gonna put on there down the road. It's a cut. That's to get your, your nose under the tent. So what I'm saying, proposing right now is that is this is gonna come before you, not gonna come before you, and it's gonna create a, a situation of irreparable damage to the property owners into the development of that corridor out there if we let this proceed the way it is. So all I'm saying is I'm just putting the city on notice. I'll make sure we're on the same page. They get outside of that grading permit. I already told that to Gordon. I am gonna be the I'm gonna be on that grading permit like there's nothing to be said. So when they turn around and they're gonna come back and they're gonna apply for their grading permit permit around this, we're gonna make sure that we're gonna require because street we want street requirements, we want water and sewer requirements. We need all of that stuff needs to be in place. Not just a SWIP where they can come out and start poaching dirt. We need to know specifics on is dirt being removed from okay, this site? Rick, is it going to be pushed have over? You wrap it up. Well, but Mr. Mayor, here's the problem. Rule. But here's the problem. This never has comes in front of the council. This that's the whole process. It did come they're going to the they're going to bypass the they're going to bypass the borrow pit system. They're going to bypass the system and they're going to run a po they're going to get a borough pit in the city of Sioux City. And that's what's wrong with this. So anyway, I just want to put just that's why I'm here. I don't come to complain. It's just this. This. This is wrong. What's going on out here? And it's. It's. And it's. It's just wrong. If this was in your front yard, you'd be doing the same. Same. Same thing. Can I take any questions? You've been working with staff on it. I mean, it sounds yeah. like it. So I'll wait for staff direction, or if they have any concerns, yeah, they need to bring forward. got this. It meets all the our code as far as all the requirements that are required in the grading code, and he his plan was to that we would be issuing a grading permit. And I'm not trying to hold up Mid-American, and it's not, I'm not trying to stop this, I'm not trying to anything like that. All I'm saying is that this is a nose under the tent situation, bypassing an unconditional borrow pit situation, and that's what we're going to end up with. We're going to end up eight, year, eight, eight to nine years of just borrowing it out, and when they're done, they walk away. It's an un and, here, and Mr. Mayor, here this will be very important to you. The, the frontage ground that we are going to grant easements to, okay? Grading easements. We're going to take, and this was condemned property, remember this was for a bike path, and for utilities only. That was condemned city property. We're going to take dirt, which is a taxpayer asset. We're going to push it to the west. When you go out on that property and look, that's that dirt that sits on the city property that's getting grading easements needs to go to the east, which balances the site. So in reality, when the city goes now to develop that piece of property, the dirt, the value of that dirt is going to have to be replaced onto that property because if you look how the, the, the actual natural contour of the, the Lus Hill, needs to be pushed to the east, not to the west. If you're gonna level this thing, and what I've said all along in this development process, get with the city, get with the state, and go from the road and come straight back. And they can take that whole freaking hill down, it doesn't matter, but that's not what this is about with development. As a developer, that's what needs to happen. That dirt is city property, that diddy is taxpayer's property, it's being pushed and going to be used on a private entity when it should stay on the site. And again, being a condemned piece of property, I'm not sure why that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't that shouldn't be bid and be put back onto the, the Lowers, an opportunity to buy that back at this point if we're gonna give that property away. So I guess I'm just going back to is, I wanna put everybody on alert, I don't know what to do. Everybody keeps saying that they're doing everything right. Well, I don't know what to do, guys. I'm, we're gonna end up with a borrow pit in our front yard for 10 years and a hole when they leave, and it's gonna create irreparable damage to possibly to our water system and to the adjacent property in there. So that's it. Sorry, guys. I'll be sorry. Right. Thanks. Anyone else? Matthew. Um, on that, one more thing. Is there, is there a possibility that um, in, in granting that we can require some kind of environmental study? Not under our ordinance. I mean, they, they have to get their appropriate DNR permits and soil, soil erosion control permits and th those type of things, but we don't have any on our, our, on our ordinance that would require them to get testing done of any environmental nature now, just for moving dirt. Uh, today, 5.30, 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, the Human Rights Commission is uh, putting on a fair housing and you um, kind of informational um, event at the Urban Native Center. I'm gonna stop by there. Um, 
Thursday, we have the Morningside Day Parade. Uh, yeah, pretty excited for that. Um, Friday at 5.30, Inclusive Sioux City um, will be at uh, Hardline Coffee, and they are gonna have a Meet the Candidates uh, for the Board of Supervisors. That moved up, I think. Yes, it did. They had pizza. You missed the cake earlier. You missed the pizza last time. Julie. I have nothing. I just want to say to everybody, I know we've had some heated discussions. We've had a lot of back and forth and rethinking and reprocessing. This is the life of your city council. This is what we do. We try to consider all angles. We sometimes have to come back and rethink things or vote another way. So it's the way it goes. Alex. Yeah, I would say two things. Um, uh, first and foremost, I, I guess I am, and I don't know if frustrated is the right word or disheartened is probably not the right word either. I don't know where I'm at. But as far as with the mower discussion, because I do think that it is disheartening for staff. I mean, I think of what we just put staff through as far as bidding and trying to do the right thing and constantly cutting them down and making them feel as if they're Wait making a poor Wait a decisions. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to take exception to that. The staff took bids. They put the specs out. Then when they came back, they had spec a PTO that was that they wanted more. I mean, this, the reason they're telling you this is a better mower is not what they stood, said there today. It has a different PTO that Gravely does than what the Toro does. So they're telling you something they want, but they're the ones that wrote the PTO spec. Can I add something as well? So, in, in addition to that, the the bid from Bernie's Lawn and Garden was for a model that was specifically spec. shown as an acceptable uh, to meet specs. So. Uh, the Toro mowers were specifically listed just like the Gravelys were and just like the John Deere's were as meeting specs. So by putting that in the spec, you're saying if, if that's the little bid, that's what you're going to go with. So why would I then say, well, well, I can have a Cadillac. I only wanted to bid an Impala, but I can have a Cadillac. They should have bid Cadillacs because uh, that puts it, makes it look like we all of a sudden are saying stuff to staff, but they're not pure in this deal. Come on now. Well, and then after that, just a minute, I'm talking, yeah. just like you said. Yeah. And then after they determined that they did put it in the spec, they still tried to say, well, but it doesn't meet the PTO spec. Well, it doesn't matter. You put it in the spec. So how, how is that that the council's wrong? And, and Alex, I want to say, I don't think staff at any point took any disheartening in I think uh, we, we put out a spec, we came with a recommendation based, you know, and then Bernie's came and said, well, yeah, we can deliver it sooner, which was the only reason we didn't, they didn't want to like it Bernie's, was they didn't want to wait the whole year to get the mowers. But then when Bernie's turned around and said, and, and there was last week, there was a little bit of a confusion about when, because the initial stuff they had submitted, they didn't submit all the, their spec stuff, which is like Bob said, if we listed that model, we listed that model. That means that's an acceptable model. Now, if you're going to submit something else, here's the specs you had to meet. And, and we had that discussion. No longer are we going to list models. Here's the specifications. Meet the specs, and we're done. Instead of trying to list models, you know, this is what I told, you know, we're going to take off the, the, the motor brand off of that. We're going to take the, and we'll put the, the model out, the spec out, so that, you know, all those brands could rebid that, that, that item. So no, I don't want you to think that we were frustrated. I, I, I didn't want to be, it's just, you know, it's just think something you think is going to go happen so quickly didn't, but I don't think any one of us is frustrated with anybody on the council over how this went. It's just, it was a process, probably more frustrating for the guys who have got to run the mowers and it's going to take us a little longer to get it. But you know, part of it's on our own fault for, for the, the, the hiccup in the spec. So I, I don't want anyone to think that we're, looking at saying, so, you know, that this didn't go the way we wanted it to or that. So I, that's all. Well, I, and I, I hope that's the case. And I just hope that then in the future we can get better products or, you know, if we don't do as far as what the name brand is or anything like that, because I do think it started some good conversation. There were some citizens that were reaching out, voicing their thoughts too <laughs> that have worked on mowers. I just want to make sure we're getting quality products. You and I have talked about frustration with some of our fleet 
of, you know, whether it's the care or otherwise, just wanting to make sure that we have products that are really servicing the, the people of Sioux City and doing And I would say all the specs or all the bids that were received are quality products. Yeah. And then it came down to, this all started because somebody bid that was rejected as not meeting spec because they didn't have the engine. We can debate whether we should include Briggs and Strat Stratton engines or not, but the spec said it had to be one of these engines. But initially, Toro Bernie's couldn't spec. get it either, though, right? What's that? And initially, Bernie's couldn't get it within a feasible timeline. They didn't meet, they got kicked out because they didn't think they could get mowers till 2023. They it subsequently said we can have them by July 1st, so we felt it appropriate to bring it back because they met the spec as outlined with the exception of when they thought they could get it. And there was a little bit. The yeah. original discussion was around something that didn't meet spec in various ways, so that's why it wasn't recommended. Not generally But speaking. all the products that were, were provided would be excellent products for the city to use. Uh, and excellent companies. I mean, and excellent I companies. use Bernie's. I yes. Generally speaking, I'm glad to hear you say that because if the council is going to be put in a position that we have to decide quality, that will be so subjective mm -hmm. for bidding it's going to throw us way off. It's already hard enough. Sometimes we have to make a decision whether it's a response, a responsible party that's bidding. That can be a subjective. So don't add this quality thing to it. I'm glad to hear you say that. And that's why when but we rebid it, we will make it very general, but we will stick to a warranty length, the horsepower, um, it but, sizes, and a few other things. Well, yes. like, Our goal I, is to get a commercial grade mower. Like the mayor said, though, so beef it up as much as you want to. But if your price goes up, we're, we can't say, well, gosh, this is better. This is nicer, so let's pay more money. I mean, it just it throws the whole bidding process <coughs> off, which city attorney, we have to follow bidding laws pretty strictly and by the letter Correct. as much as we possibly can. And, and, and the, a properly written spec is going to eliminate some of the products. That's the whole idea. You're going to eliminate some of the products. The problem is, and I agree wholeheartedly with the mayor, if you write a spec that gets it down to one product, then you're not doing your job. You need to have multiple bidders that can bid on a job, but it doesn't mean you have to take every person's product. We should write a spec that gets us a quality mower or a quality truck or whatever it is, but that we are allowed to have multiple types or versions or different. Yep. The second thing I was gonna bring up was, um, last night was game one of the Clark Cup final. It was a really good turnout actually down at Tyson Event Center for the Musketeers. So they're chasing the Clark Cup, they're in the finals. Um, so make sure the next game is tonight, 7.05. I'm gonna go home, have a little supper, and then I'll be at the game. So hope to see a lot of people down there. So this will be game two. Game three will be in Wisconsin. Um, and then game four, hopefully, we'll see where we're at. So we lost last night, so we need to come back strong tonight. So hope to see a lot of people down at Tyson. That's all I have. Good luck to them, Musketeers. I'll be at a soccer game tonight. <laughs> hey, Marty, could you please come up to the podium? I, I'm sorry I didn't get you called back Friday. I just wasn't a good time. I just want to visit briefly, Mayor, about um, the uh, – YMCA building and sure. the party that was looking at it for feasibility study they're not moving forward and we're currently removing asbestos correct that's well I I think they're about to start um, maybe Jeff can you okay. confirm that but yes the contract was awarded um, and they're I think they're about to start and that will be taking place this summer okay so uh, probably till early fall or so. the only point I want to raise on on this Jeff and, and Marty is that so we're, we're gonna remove the asbestos. I think there have been statements made in the past that it's a pretty good structural, it's a pretty good structure as far as the building goes. I just don't wanna get past the point where we're starting to demolish and tear it down and have citizens or somebody that might wanna develop it saying, I didn't know that that's what the city was gonna be doing with it. They were removing asbestos, so that makes it a lot better or at least more attractive, I would think, to potential developers. So I just wanted to talk to you about that, whether we should be doing more marketing or anything sure. for that structure. Yeah, keeping in mind that we don't own the building, uh, but we can cert we're certainly open to talking to any developers that would be interested. Um, right. The Heartland Church folks, uh, Pastor Stockton informed us, as, as you know, just last week that they had decided against moving forward with the building. 
Um, he's a pastor, but it's not Heartland Church. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. Uh, you're right. He, he, it's a, another group, a gate group, I think it's called. But anyway, they had looked at it for um, a use that seemed to fit the building, and they. Uh, Agape, I'm sorry. I got it, buddy. <laughs> um, they. Um, uh, had an architect look at it. They, we, we toured the building with them and so on, and, and they, I think they just found the challenges would be too much for what they wanted to do. Um, uh, Jeff can speak to this too. I, the the uh, asbestos removal would be helpful, whether we're gonna ultimately tear the building down or um, find another development. Either way, it, needs it would to have be to done occur anyway. Demolition. Right, um, I know that Daryl has been budgeting, uh, setting aside funds for the last few years, and there's funds available for the demolition. If no one steps forward, I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. So, Jeff Hansen, Community Development Operations Manager. Uh, as Marty mentioned, the asbestos has started, the asbestos removal, the abatement process. Um, the biggest thing that you're going to see is the removal of the majority of all the windows. Uh, the windows uh, have asbestos caulking uh, in them and surrounding them. And so, the cheapest, easiest way to remove that asbestos is to remove the full entire window. And so, that'll be their your appearance, your most physical um, item that you're going to see is those windows being removed. And we do not plan to uh, board those up or cover them following the abatement. We would plan just to go into the demolition phase. If no one has any additional interest in the property, we would go from the asbestos abatement right into the demo. I think part of the problem is the difficulty is not just the condition of the building, which is, which is um, um, difficult, but the the structure is it, it's it's built in such a way that it's it's not very functionally useful. I mean, there's a very large gym, you know, and then there's a, a, a several floors of, of small rooms that you know at one time were um, whatever they used boarding rooms or, or whatever. So it it's not easily uh, um, converted to another use, as maybe some of, some older structures downtown that have floors of spaces that are you know with lots of windows and. Um, you can convert those, they may be functionally obsolete as an office, but they can be converted to, to pretty nice residential um, units. It's more difficult with a building like this, um, and I think that's what people have looked at it, have realized, you know, the cost isn't just sort of renovating the, the structure, renovating the, the systems and so on, the plumbing, electric, and all that, but it's also how do you convert the building to a use. I think this group had a, an idea where they could use that gym space for some activities and so on that maybe made sense. But um, it's more difficult than for a lot of types of uses. Swimming pool hole still there? Yep. Pardon me? Where the swimming pool was, yep. that's still there? It's still there. It has water yeah. in it <laughs> from the right. roof. I wouldn't swim in it, but yeah, <laughs> it had water in it. But, um, right. you know, the central uh, annex was, I think, a similar kind of building. There was a huge gym with a, with a, a, a lot of other classroom space and so on. It was, it was converted to housing by taking part of the gym and using it for apartments and then leaving some of it as recreation space. So it's sort of could envision something like that, but it is difficult, and the site is difficult. As you know, it's a very steep hill, and if it's torn down, we'll be left with probably a situation where we'll have to have retaining walls, or, or, or you know, Daryl feels like maybe the, um, the concrete walls that are there now, which have held that hill up, could be left in place. That same sort of thing happened with the YWCA downtown, which is now park, but those original walls were left in place because, you know, it's a pretty steep hill, so. Um, no, I appreciate that, Marty. I just I didn't yeah. want to miss an opportunity if there is one out there. Maybe yeah, it's not there, but maybe maybe and by there is. Talking about it here, we're certainly willing to meet with anyone and and work with them if if the, if anybody's interested. And uh, have you reached out to other parties? We've like we've I know, mentioned uh, it. We've we've Coach talked Chuck to developers interested. about it over the years. Sure. We've, okay. Uh, we're always looking for opportunities for especially for housing, and we've 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 brought that up with a number of developers and I've, I just, we haven't just garnered a whole lot of interest, but. Um, Do you know we'll like a ballpark figure of what, what it would cost to rehabilitate the building? You don't have enough money in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it depends I mean, on what the out, use would be. 200, 250 bucks a square foot and I don't know what you'd get out of that. We, we could uh, get you some information on that, but. But it'd be a big number. That'd be a big number. And then you don't have parking. That's the worst part about it. Yeah. I thought there's there's not parking. Oh, there I was a parking lot that was one lot down, but that's been sold off. Oh, okay. Your, the current well, owner sold uh, that off, parking. I believe. Okay. Okay. I appreciate okay. that. Then one other thing, Mayor. Um, I just want to acknowledge Mike Collette 
for your hard work you've been doing on the airport and the facilities and the flights and everything that you've got going. It's a, it's a full plate. So I just want to acknowledge your hard work and tell you how much I appreciate what you've been doing. Just keep making progress for us. And the oil will never blow down. Oh, I don't know if you should. It may that be up. torn down. <laughs> I hope not. It may be moved. I hope not. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. That's all I have, Mayor. And I'll see you at the parade Thursday. Okay, Rex, you have an announcement to make. Yes, uh, Rex Mueller, Police Department. Uh, the mobile speed kiosks are going to be operational tomorrow. And uh, we have already been pre-planning, notifying the media, There's some show and tells. Uh, we will publish those when they're out, where they're out. Obviously, our ultimate goal on anything like this is compliance. Uh, we would love for folks to get used to these and adjust their speed accordingly so that we don't need to collect anything from the public. Uh, as you guys know, we have small traffic unit, which you were kind enough to increase a few years ago, but the demand itself as to speed checks and intersections is overwhelming, and we can't put a police officer at any one particular spot 24-7. This gives us a viable option to try to modify driver behavior. So it's just a technology piece that we hope will work for us and slow people down. And this is one unit? We have two. In we fact, have two. they're going to start out. We've got two locations that are going to start out. Uh, you have to do a little pre-planning, the width of the roadway, speed of the roadway, grade, super elevation, things of that nature. So it's going to start out in the 3,000 block of Floyd and then the 3,300 block of Hamilton. And again, uh, our PIO is ready to do some oh, show and tells with the media. <laughs> how, and how, how does this work? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a visual on it. What, well, what, what is it that? Picture a big ATM. <laughs> Hold your comments, please. <laughs> a baby what? A, a big ATM. A, a big it kind of looks like that. Um, uh, but with the batteries, it's, uh, it's very heavy, so it's a big piece of equipment that we have to move. And it's something that's placed, and it's left there. And then uh, we will run it for several weeks. And then we will move to a new location and move it around so that it, uh, it is moved to trouble spots throughout the city. But some, again, the roadways have to fit some of the criteria. So if it were, you know, small neighborhoods, things like that, uh, where the street and the grade don't uh, work, we wouldn't be able to place it there. But obviously we've got permission very from the homeowner or from a, a property owner. Can you place them, Nicole? Technically, we don't need it, do we, as far as the parking goes? But Correct. If it's in the parking adjacent to the street, then the city has control of it. Right, but what I'm thinking of that, where the boys and girls home is up in Indian Hills, where it's a speed zone. Oh, sure. Can you, could you put it on the boys and girls home property? I would say potentially with an agreement, we could as long as it met the incline and the other standards that are necessary. And, and does it shoot both ways or just one way? One direction. Okay. That have big flashing signs. Actually, we we already placed. We don't even have the units there, and we already placed warning signs. I was sent photos of it, so there's going to be plenty of warning. Our uh, traffic sergeant is going to go on on the radio in the morning and warn people. We'll put it on our social media. Again, if people take all that and slow down, we're right. in good shape. Don't have to worry about it. If they Absolutely speak. not. So no. what what's it record? Your it's speed. it's a, yeah, it's the same thing. So if Here. I'm going a 50 and a 30, do I get a ticket? You're going, yes. You do. Yes. What's the criteria? Fine, there'll be a fine with that? What's that? There's yes. a fine with that? Yes. Speeding 50 and a 30, there's a real nice fine. Yes, there is. So, But if, but, but if I'm going 39 and a 30? We can't tell. Don't can't tell say. him, Chief. Just there, is, there is a threshold Chief. that provides a reasonable cushion, just like there always has been. Our, our, again, our, we, we understand that people uh, people's attention isn't always solely focused on that. So, uh, but it will be fair. It'll City definitely Attorney be fair. is looking at me like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so two of them. I move we adjourn. Second. I got to go. Took all the fun out of it. Scott. Aye. <laughs> Waters. Aye. Aye. Moore. Aye, please. Cocaine. Aye. Shaner. Aye. All right, guys, go Muskies. <laughs>